G'day guys, Trent here. Gonna just take you through how to get out of a non-controlled aerodrome back into a controlled airspace. So I'm here at Bathurst Island, uh, which is over on the Tiwis, just to the north of Darwin. And we're gonna head across from here straight to Darwin. Uh, it's runway 29 over there at the moment. Little bit of weather around, few thunderstorms, but it shouldn't be a drama unless they've sort of swept in um, since I've been on the ground here. But we'll go and have a look. So we'll see you in the cockpit and we'll be starting off with contacting Brisbane Centre on HF. Uh, we're about 200 feet out of range here. Uh, so we'll do that and then we will uh, obviously get out of here and contact departures or approach rather as we get a little bit closer for clearance. Coming in on runway 29 uh, is what I'm expecting but we'll see what they give us. All right, see you in the air. Craft. See you in the aircraft. Hello guys, so welcome into the cockpit. Uh, so we just started up and uh, just waiting for the radios and everything to fire up. And essentially what we're going to do, as I said, is we're going to contact HF. Reason being uh, Bathurst Island is about 200 feet uh, too low for VHF coverage, unfortunately. So we're planning an IFR flight. It's going to be from here direct to Darwin. We'll probably get some vectoring as we get closer and we will uh, then negotiate whether we do an approach or do a visual approach. Uh, depending on what's going on in the airspace and the weather. Often this time of afternoon, the clouds, uh, the storms start to roll through, can impact on final for runway 29 in Darwin. So we'll just have a bit of a look at the radar in a minute and see what we've got. So we'll pull that up now, actually, and have a look at the radar. And it's looking pretty good. So there's a bit of stuff towards the south there. But otherwise, uh, no real dramas at all. So that should be fine. I'm not too worried about that at all. Looking good. Okay, so we're going to go COM3. And going to get our code and clearance here. Flight watch, flight watch, 8843, Lima Alpha Papa, IFR taxi. Lima Alpha Papa, flight watch. Lima Alpha Papa IFR Baron 1 POB taxis Bathurst Island for Darwin Ramay 33. Three. Lima Alpha Papa stand by for traffic. Okay, so Flight Watch is exactly that. They're looking after airspace uh, as far as SAR times go, SAR watches, but they're not looking after the airspace itself. So he's going to talk to whoever's running Brisbane Centre at the moment to get a snapshot of the area. Also get my transponder code, and he's going to relay that to me in just a second. Lima Alpha Papa, no reported IFR traffic, walk 2532. 2532, Lima Alpha Papa. OK, so code 2532 is set. That's good, that's good. All right, now we have set a timer now. So basically we've got 10 minutes to get out of Dar uh, out of Bathurst Island. If we haven't taken off by then, they're gonna start looking for us. And that's the beauty of it, that we've got that SAR protection. That's the whole point of doing it. All right, so flight plan's all set. We've got Bathurst to Darwin, and then uh, that's Darwin VOR and then Darwin Aerodrome, YPDN, that's all set. The reason why we do that is to initialize our PBN codes. We're operating terminal mode, RMP1, one mile. Uh, we need to put the airport codes in, otherwise it won't recognize that within 30 miles and it'll stay in on route mode and we'll be out of tolerance. Bathurst Island traffic, Lima Alpha Papa, IFR Baron, taxis runway 33 for overhead departure to Darwin, Bathurst Island. Bathurst Island Aerodrome. All right, runway set. Everything is set. We're looking good. Okay, so we're going to go um, into the departure call now as we come over the top of the field. 
and we want to know our time and our estimate. So, highway traffic, Delta into hotel, departing left, crosswind, runway 31, passing 1200, climbing 3500, turning left, intercept track 164 for Darwin, Snake Bay. Bathurst on traffic, Lima for par. Baron has departed Bathurst Island at 58. Maneuvering the track 154, passing at 2,500, 4,000, Darwin at 1.4. Okay, so now we're going to go to Centre and make the same call. Brisbane Centre, Lima, Alpha Papa, departure. Lima, Alpha Papa Centre. Lima, Alpha Papa, departed Bathurst Island 58, passing 2,100, on climb 4,000. Darwin 14. Lima Alpha Papa identified approaching Kadar Air Space. Contact Darwin approach 134 days for one for clearance. 1341, Lima Alpha Papa. Okay, so Darwin approach 1341. And we want to get our code and frequency. We've all got that set. We're squawking. So we still don't have clearance. So what we need to do now is have a listen to the ATIS and then we'll be ready to call Darwin Approach. So let's do that now. Approach runway 290 and 36 for arrivals. Runway 290 for departure, land and hold short operations in progress. Wind 310 degrees 10 knots. Visibility greater than 10 kilometers. Cloud few 3,500. Temperature 32. QNH 1006. Departure frequency. One, two, three, decimal, zero. On first contact with Darwin, notify receipt of Kilo. All right, information Kilo. So that's the same as when I left Darwin, Darwin so no dramas there. We can turn that off. All right, so as we head down this airspace here, you can see we've got a little, um, a little cutout, I guess you could call it. And that cutout is for the airspace uh, just to give us time, basically, to depart Bathurst Island and to get our code. So we're at 35 miles. That's basically 10 miles to run. We'll be there in a few minutes. So we'll get on to Darwin now and uh, get our clearance. Down approach, Lima Alpha Papa. 1 PB with Kilo, maintaining 4,000, tracking 154, Darwin 1.4 and Lazo approved. Lima Alpha Papa, thanks. Cleared down at direct 4,000. Cleared down direct 4,000. Lima Alpha Papa. Okay, so we're now tracking direct to Darwin 4,000. Alpha Victor Fox Rock, Squawk 4600, send details. Squawk 4600, Alpha Victor Fox Rock, Stephen, maintaining 2,500. Received Kilo, TPB, Lazar. Okay, we're leveled off. The aeroplane takes a little while to level off as well, so don't rush this. Take your time leveling off the aeroplane. You want to do it right the first time. Clear to Darwin Jackers Junction, Lee Point 3500. Clear to Jackers Junction, Lee Point 3500, Alpha Victor Foxtrot. Alright, so you can see we're tracking along. GPS has got a message. We have a look, it's just warning us that airspace is in 10 minutes. Whenever you get a message, uh, make sure you acknowledge it. Uh, could be warning you something. Usually it's just something like that, telling you you've got airspace in front of you. But uh, it's better to be safe than sorry. And it's actually part of the operational requirements. Alright, so you can see here that we're tracking. Now I've actually got this set up in GPS steering mode. Now that's different to heading bug. You can see I've got the heading bug on. I've got the autopilot on here at the moment. It's just an old Sentry autopilot. But what that's doing is essentially running course mode. So it's going to intercept the course. We can see the little magenta diamond at the top. That means our track is lined up and we're going to maintain course. So if I put my heading bug straight up, that's actually my heading. I can see on the GPS here as well, you can see the track, the direct track and tracking. We're basically matching 154 there. So that's exactly what we want. We're still in terminal mode at the moment because within 30 miles of uh, Bathurst and soon we'll be 30 miles of Darwin, so we probably won't even go into on route mode on this leg. So, thinking ahead, we want to have a look at the weather. I can see some weather further east, a little bit to the south, so really I'm happy with Darwin. Information Kilo, 
That's no dramas at all. So we can probably expect just a visual approach. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to request an ILS and we'll run through that. Lima Alpha Par, if available, requesting a 29 ILS. Lima Alpha Par, copy. All right, great. So we can start setting up the ILS. So in our nav, we've got 109.7 there. Now we want to push the ID button. Watch what happens next to the 70 there. ID pops up. So now when I press nav... Sorry. Yep. All right, nothing heard. We're too far out at the moment, so that's okay. We'll just wait. So we've got 109.7 dialed up. And approach, good afternoon, Envoy. Basically our local Q&H is set, everything else is done, we just need to go through the approach plate. So we've got... 92 dial approach, g'day. Do you send via start to 9000, Q&H 1006. Do you send via the start to 9000 on 1006, and Envoy 92 have a request when able. Go ahead. Yeah, we wouldn't mind doing an approach, missed approach, and then come back for a second approach to land. Do you have much traffic in the sequence that will uh, either deconflict or uh, cause... Some so we've got two approaches, or two ILSs into Darwin. The first one is the X-ray and one Zulu. Now, we can do uh, both of these approaches. There's no problem with that. The thing to be mindful of is what equipment have I got on board the aeroplane. Now, if we have a look down the middle part of the plate, we can see uh, our distance datum. And one is referencing DN, or Delta November, Darwin VOR DME. And the other one is India Delta November, which is the co-located uh, locator, a uh, localizer DME. He sent 3,000 Lima, Papa. All right, 3,000 set. So I'm going to start sending down. Altitude set, pitch mode set. Down we come. All right, so while I'm talking to you, I'm going to keep an eye on that so we don't go below 3,000. Um, so the distance there, if we don't have a DME, I typically can't put in IDN into the GPS. It's not a waypoint that always shows up. And even if it does, there's nowhere on this plate that approves GNSS in lieu of. Um, whereas we look at the X-ray, you can see that we can use GNSS in lieu of the DME. So we're going to use the X-ray plate. Darwin's not going to clear me one or the other. It matters not which one we get cleared to do. Uh, if we were to overlay two aeroplanes doing both approaches, they'll be in exactly the same spot. It's just the distance to height ratios being modified. All right, so we're going to come in. Inbound for the ILS X-ray approach. We're going to get vectors on this one. There's no arcing. And we're going to come around somewhere around waypoint La Par. As we come into La Par, we're then going to expect a right turn. So what they'll typically do is give us a right base, maybe even a right downwind, and then a base, and then something like 250 to give us a 45-degree uh, thereabouts intercept of the localizer. Once we get onto the localizer, we'll hit the glide slope from above, uh, from below. That'll come down on top of us, and we'll follow it down. We're going to come down to our minima of 290 feet and 1.2 kVs. Again, this aircraft doesn't have a autopilot that can couple to the glide slope. We don't have the alerts and everything else that's needed. If in the event of a localizer failure, we can revert to a, uh, sorry, a glide slope failure, we can revert to a localizer approach where we're going to come down to a minimum of 520 feet and 1.6 kVs. And this is again why it's important that we have that distance because if we load the ILS into the GPS, it won't give us that. We'll be forced into a missed approach scenario. So everyone that keeps putting ILSs into the GPS, you can do it for guidance, especially if it gives you the arc, but you need a secondary device talking to the Darwin DME in this instance, or whichever your DME is. Okay, so there's the approach. We're all set up, ready to go. We're just going to wait for some vectors. We're just coming down to... Descend to 2,000. Report established. 3,000 feet. I'm now just using my pitch wheel on the Sentry Autopilot to level off, and then we can go altitude, and that will level us off at 3,000 feet. All right, we're 12 miles to run to Darwin. We'll be heading out 
over this direction. Uh, request the ILS 219, Uniform Romeo, Romeo. Uniform uh, there's some of that weather out there that I was talking about, but it's far enough east at the moment, it's not going to be a problem for us. Alright, so we're now on a heading of 105, we're on downwind, we're on about a 5 mile downwind, and I can see that because of this cross track area. You can see here, we've got 5 miles, and the way I've done that is I've gone direct to Darwin, I'm going to set 286 down the bottom there, and that's now basically set an OBS course. If we have a look, hopefully you can see this. If we have a look at the nav screen, but you can see the magenta line. I'll just zoom out a bit so you can see it. So that's the 286 reference Darwin that I've set. So now I've got an idea of where I am on downwind, which is going to just help me with where the localizer is going to come in. At. This helps it sort of jumping out at you and, Romeo, Romeo, and overshooting, which is what we don't want to do. All right, so there's a really handy little tip. So I've got 286 set. As you can see now, we're still about five miles north of the course. It's not giving me track guidance. You can see now I'm swinging around everywhere. The localizer is starting to come into range now, so we can try our nav mode again. I'll push the button. Great, there's our ident as per our chart. Okay, so we're all set. Everything is tuned. Identified, set. I've got tower ready to go. I'm on approach. Got the ILS frequency set. We've got our distance Darwin. All right, and I'll, the, by doing this as well, you note that I've got Darwin suspended. What this does is it stops it moving on to YPDN or any other waypoint you might have in the GPS. Um, again, because if I'm coming down final, I want to be talking to Darwin the whole time. If it's going somewhere else, well, then I've lost my distance information. If I had to do a localizer approach, it would make it really difficult. Alright, so we're going to get vectors onto base in just a second. We're about 8 miles, we've got a little ways to go yet. So we can probably expect something like a right heading 180, thereabouts, and then uh, we will come around onto a 250 or thereabouts for the final intercept. Three landing checks, brakes are on, off, brake pressure is good, fields are on the floor, undercarriage is to come. Mixtures are rich, fuel is on mains, fuel pumps. Temperature's well below 35, so we can go uh, pumps off there. Instruments are set, altimeters, cross checks. Set, set, set. Switches, lights, landing lights are on, taxi light can stay off, and harnesses are all secure. All right. You can see we're just coming out a beam Lapar now. So that's about right. We should be having a right turn shortly. That puts us about 11 miles out. So any minute now we can expect to give a turn. It always helps to get an idea. What do you think the controller's doing with you? I can expect this vector for another three minutes and then a turn inbound to the island. Lima Alpha Lapar. Okay, so I'm expecting him to turn me soon. He was expecting me to turn me soon as well. Um, but because we've got traffic, we're just going to go another three minutes. All right, three minutes. We're doing ground speed 160 knots. So it's about two and a half miles a minute. Uh, so this is going to be about seven and a half, eight miles. If we have a look at the weather out in front of us, we can see that it's all to the south um, and southeast. Sorry, what's out in front is off radar. I've got no real problem. There it is there. So I've got no real problem with any of that. Okay. A little bit hazy down to the south. Nothing of concern. There's Darwin. Back behind us. Alright, so you can see we're still on about a five mile downwind leg. We're 14 miles. So about another three or four miles we should expect our turn on to base. Starting to approach the beautiful Adelaide River. Bit of rain. This is all wetland down below me, so this will pretty much all flood. All the uh, sort of lighter grey green shades, that's all wetland. 
So this will be all wet. And this is the problem up here. Uh, when the crops start to migrate from uh, river system to river system and uh, start chasing cows and things. Lima Alpha for power position 20 miles east, down turn right heading 190 for base. Right 190, Lima Alpha Park. Okay, so you notice they gave us a position because we're not where we're normally going to be. So now I know roughly how far from Darwin I am. I'm about uh, into the right turn now, 190 for base. So soon we'll get a second turn onto final. And we'll get an idea of when the localizer is going to come alive because again, we have uh, our distance off the center line. So we can see here, 3.3. So in a minute, we're going to get within QE. Now remember when we're on a, a terminal mode, GPS, one mile. Power position at 2 2 miles east, down turn at right, heading 250. Can set the localizer, cleared ILS from my 29 approach, report established. Turn right 250, make five minutes of the localizer, report established, Lima Alpha Papa. Okay, so there we go. So I've set 250 and the localizer's alive, and you can see also here the glide soap's alive. So that tells me everything's going to come in as expected. So we're 2.2 miles cross track error. So as I was saying, in terminal mode at one mile, we're doing like an RMP GPS approach, the needle will start to come in. Ours is not going to do that until point one. It's going to be a lot tighter, which is basically uh, our final segment. It'll be about point three of a mile out here, and it'll start swinging in. So we've got 1.5 to go. C1438, contact Brisbane Centre, 129 to small Alright, so you can see the one mile starting to come in. 129 to small And now, we're about half a mile, the localizer is starting to come in now. Alright, 286. Lima Alpha Pass established. Lima Alpha Pass, thanks. One at seven miles touchdown, leaving 3000, connect tower, 133.1, good night. Leaving 3000, 1331, good night. Lima Alpha Papa. All right. So, we're coming in on final. Intercepted the glide slope. We uh, 16 miles to run. Maintain a right downwind. Sun's gone. I'm going to take my sunnies off so we can see. A okay, so it's 80 mile final. So we've got a little while to go. So we're now established, waiting for top of descent. So we have a look at the chart. That's going to happen around about nine and a half miles. We're not doing that off a distance data though. We're doing that off our glide slope. So waiting for the glide slope to come in. All right, 16 miles. One three three one's ready to go. Now, the big thing when you're doing an ILS is to understand that it's a lot more sensitive than normal and to just relax. We can really start chasing needles. So, depending on the equipment you've got, use it. So, at the moment, we can see we're just slightly left of track. Up the top here, you've got the little magenta diamond again because I've got it set to where we want to be. So, they're lined up. If I have a look over here, direct track 287, and we are tracking 287. Again, that's exactly what we want. Okay, so that's good. That means we're not going to go any further. So if I just come right by about three degrees, that gives me a three degree intercept. That's about all I need. And if we have a look here, that needle will just slowly come in. Alright, so we're 12.6 miles to run. And there we go, look at that needle. So now one, two, three, kind of come back left the other way. And we're good. All right, 11.9. There we go. So now we're tracking 287. That's looking great. 
Light slope is alive. All right, I need two hands here. So we're going to go for speed. Is good. Flat. Approach flat set. There we go. All right, then glide slope coming in. That's even just that little distraction. Trying to film and do this at the same time. All right. Balls half a half a glide slope, half a dot. Almost. There we go. Gear down. Contact tower. One, two, three. Perfect. Glide slope's coming in. I think it said nine and a half before. I mean eight and a half miles. Now, we're doing 120 knots. 120 knots for our descent profile. Normally we say it's two miles a minute. That's going to be 120 times five is 600, or half of 120 is 60. So we want 600 feet per minute. So we're just going to set an attitude, which is the nose just below, and that's going to set about 600 feet per minute. Okay. Sorry, Big Blue. And that should keep us nicely balanced. We do that, job done. We're not going to have to worry about anything. Downtown Lima Alpha Papa. Lima Alpha Papa, downtown. Okay, so nice and stable, 600 feet per minute. And we're holding glide slope. My speed's stable, it's exactly where I want it. I'm not fighting the aeroplane. Get it trimmed, and it's all good. My tracking, 287, 287, so I'm not deviating. So I'm going to hold glide slope and hold track. Now, the thing to remember though, is we're doing 600 feet per minute now for a three degree profile. Soon, we're going to start slowing down. We're going to get in the wide arc, take full flap, and we're going to start coming back towards 100, 110 knots. So we will have to uh, vary our glide slope slightly. All right. You can see I've just gone a little bit shallow of 600 feet per minute and we've just gone a little on the high side. That's okay. Let's fix that. So we're going to just drop the nose, or lower it rather, just a little bit more. There we go, by another 100 feet per minute. That's all we need and it's going to catch it up. Look at that glide slope. It's just coming back in. Alright, so there's no rush to make it right immediately. You know, we've got time. There we go, coming in nicely. Tracking, still 287, that's looking great. Rate of descent's good. All right, we're just coming through 1,900 feet. So the next event that we're uh, worrying about is our final approach check. Which is three miles and 1330 feet. Hello, Ruben. Ruben's on the ground asking me if that's me and Matt. Yes, Ruben. Hey, mate, how are you? Might be down there getting a photo. All right, so we're coming down now. There we go, three miles, 30, 30. So on slope, on path, we're good to go. Now, stabilize approach. So we are in the white. We're going to go pitch fine. Undercarriage down, three greens, full flap. Cow flaps open, all by a thousand feet. Now, some people might say that's too early. We're visual, and I would tend to agree. 500 feet is usually enough, but for IMC conditions, we're going to practice it by a thousand feet. The reason we do this is so we're stable. We're not taking flaps. Some people will go full flap when you're visual. Now, personally, I find that a complete over mitigation of uh, descent rates and everything else. You're acting like the airplane's not going to climb and go around. Of course, it will. Sure as hell don't want to be taking full flap at that point because you're going to destabilise, could even put you back in the cloud. And you don't want to be doing it on something like an ILS at 250, 300 feet above the ground. Lima Alpha Papa, continue approach. Safety uh, officer is just completing an inspection. You can plan for Victor. Copy the traffic, Lima Alpha. Right, so there's a vehicle on the runway. No dramas. All right, so glide slope's looking good. Everything's nice. 
Tarmac 1, Lima Pa, runway 29, I clear land. 29, clear to land, Lima Pa. Okay, so I am coming down now, still a glide slope. Ribbon, that's for you. Um, coming in on glide slope, 300 feet. We want 290 feet. And 290 feet, visual, there we are. You can see on the pappies there, we've got two and two. And I don't need to do anything now. I either go full power and go around if we're not visual, or I just keep the profile going. I'm not changing anything, I'm still coming down on the glide slope, down to the runway. A lot of people sort of start changing what they're doing at this point, and there's just no need. Alright, eyes to the far end, round out. A little bit off centre line, that's a bit average, wasn't it? There we go. And then in Darwin, the first thing you do is open the window because it's hot and humid, you can even see my glasses fogging out properly. Alright. There we go. Alright guys, well there we go. That's um, an ILS into Darwin Airport and uh, OCTA departure. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of things to be thinking about. Um, sorry, I got a bit tardy at some points there. Obviously trying to film and do all that at the same time, it's a bit tricky. Um, I'm on uh, this flight all by myself today. Alright, take care. Good luck. Any problems or questions, you know how to reach me. Talk to you soon. Cheers.